Next, we'll talk about considerations for using benzodiazepines and benzodiazepine receptor agonists in the geriatric population. So benzodiazepines instead of hypnotics, in general, the detrimental side effects of these medications frequently outweigh any short-term symptomatic relief. And in general, we're really trying to minimize or avoid use of these medications. The reasons for this is that these medication classes cause significant impairment in memory. They're also associated with an increased risk of falls and hip fracture. And then for an older adult, that can be a really defining event that can really limit mobility as well as independence and is often a trigger for nursing home placement. They're also associated with other adverse respiratory outcomes, for instance, increased respiratory suppression, especially when combined with prescription opiates. There's some literature to suggest that use of these classes of medications might be associated with an increased risk of dementia. However, there's been both positive and negative studies regarding that. However, there is a clear association with cognitive impairment and decreased attention. These medications have also been associated with motor vehicle accidents. For patients who are experiencing agitation with risk of harm to self or others, we will consider a short course of a benzodiazepine, and we really try to avoid medications with a very long half-life. So for instance, you know, if we think about a patient with a severe kind of psychotic depression, a patient who's manic with agitation, a patient with dementia with extreme behaviors, we might think about a short course of medication. However, we will often want to exhaust and really try other alternatives first. So thinking about PRN scheduled use of medications like sedating antidepressants like trazodone, use of gabapentin, or other kind of antidepressants to try to address some of that agitation, especially in the setting of dementia. For patients who are on benzodiazepine or sedative hypnotics, we're always looking to deprescribe when possible. Again, for some patients, these will be medications that have been very helpful for them. They're not able to come off of the medication. But for patients where the benefit is questionable, it's always worth trying a trial off or at least trying to reduce the dose. I've included here a couple different resources that can be helpful in thinking about deprescribing. The Empower brochures, which come out of Canada, can be very helpful brochures that you can provide to patients that help provide some education about the potential risks of these drug classes and provide a structured tapering off program. So I would encourage folks to take a look at that. Also, deprescribing.org is an organization that really provides some helpful patient-facing information about discussing the risks of these medication classes, as well as tapering suggestions. So key points here. So the detrimental effects of benzodiazepines instead of hypnotics frequently outweigh any short-term symptomatic relief. These medications can be used as a rescue medication for acute agitation, but in general, we're trying to avoid their long-term use. Lastly, structured tapering programs can help patients safely and comfortably discontinue medications. 